1991, the federal government put in the first regulations that monitored the amount of lead in drinking water. There were some minor revisions over the years, but a major revision took place in 2021. And that's what we're doing here today, is talking about some of the changes that we have to prepare for. So one of the things that we'll need to do is to test how we can better control any release of lead from the service line material into the drinking water. Now the lead line is the uh, line that goes from the curb into the home, and that is owned by the homeowner. From the curb out to the main in the street is owned by the utility. That's where the lead is in the water. It's not in the water itself as it comes from the treatment plant down to the uh, services. When it gets in that lead pipe and it sits overnight, that's when lead has the ability to get into your drinking water. So we've been doing a lot of work over the last 20, 30 years to remain compliant, and we are compliant with drinking water lead regulations. What we've done here is extract some lead service mains from our distribution system from the services, and we set them up in an experimental design here. So we can control what we're feeding. So we have a control loop, and we have two additional loops or trains that feed phosphate into the system. Phosphorus is good for controlling lead release. And so we've evaluated that. We've submitted a study to the state health department and they've said that's the optimum way to control lead release in our system. So we're making provisions to feed that full scale into the distribution system, though we're probably a year, year and a half out. So the study continues and my group here has done an excellent job of maintaining and sampling and analyzing these samples so that we can make the best decisions moving forward. Another change to the lead rules is that we have to identify where all the lead services are in our distribution system. We're gonna make a transition now out into the field and see how we're working to identify those lead pipes. So we're here on Nielsen Street in the city of Utica doing a service investigation. As you heard from our water quality director, Phil Tangora, new regulations are requiring us to figure out how many lead service lines are in the system and where they are. We have to report all that in what's known as a lead service line inventory, which will be turned into the state health department later this fall in 2024. So we have to physically verify what's in the ground. The way that we do that is with this vacuum excavation truck. What they do is, with vacuum, pull the soil out from the curb valve out in the street near the curb, and they can see both sides of the service, from the water main to the valve, and from the valve into the house, because sometimes they can be both lead, they could be both copper, or any mix, depending on whether a homeowner made that change any time over the last couple of decades. Unfortunately, when the Water Authority was formed, we inherited a lot of records from all of our predecessors, various local utilities, including the Utica Water Board, and not all those records were kept up to date. So we can't rely strictly what's in our files. We are required to physically verify it, and we're gonna be doing that throughout the rest of the summer. We're doing a statistical analysis, and we're going on various blocks doing multiple holes, and we're also looking at a housing stock that was built prior to 1945. That's a reasonable cutoff date because we have verification showing that lead was not used for service lines after that date. So once that's all done, we'll be submitting all this information to the health department. Eventually, we're gonna to have to replace every single one of these lead service lines. In the meantime, we're doing the chemical testing, as you saw earlier, to help make sure those lead levels stay down below the agreed upon level that the health department says is acceptable. And that way, nobody's in danger. Um, they haven't been, but the regulations tighten. Our chemical process will tighten, and we'll make sure we're in full compliance as we go through this entire process. We're also inviting select customers to participate in this process and voluntarily give us photos from their service line in their basement. Anybody that wants to know more about that can go to our website, mvwa.us, and find out how you do that. And again, it's only for eligible customers that can get a credit on their water bill if they, if they meet the criteria and can send us a documented photo to show what's coming in to the basement from the street. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna be shooting another segment very shortly that's gonna show how we're testing for lead levels in our laboratory, the equipment that we've purchased, and what we're doing to safeguard the customer's public health to make sure there's no measurable amounts of lead coming into your water.